We've done several AIO cooler reviews on the channel in recent months, but today it's the return of air coolers because I've got two very similar spec and very similar priced dual tower air coolers for review. Instead of doing individual reviews like normal for each cooler, today we're going to be putting these two head to head to find out which one is the best. So the two coolers I'm talking about are the Deep Cool Assassin 4 and the Cooler Master MA824 Stealth. As I say, these two are both very similar in specs and very similar in price. They're both available now. The Assassin 4 has an MSRP of $84.99. You can pick it up currently for that price from places like scan.co.uk. The MA824 Stealth has an MSRP of $89.99, but I can't find it anywhere at that price currently. The best Best I could find it for was $99.99 again I think from scan.co.uk. As I say the specs on these are very similar. The Deep Cool Assassin 4 features 7 and 6 millimeter diameter heat pipes, dual aluminium black coated heat sink, fin stacks, 120 and 140 millimeter Deep Cool FDB fans, unobstructed RAM clearance on AMD and Intel desktop platforms, a total height of 164 millimeters for improved compatibility, a heat sink mounted switch for swapping between performance and quiet fan modes and there's also an optional third fan bracket included with the Assassin 4. The MA824 Stealth does have slightly higher specifications in some areas than the Deepcool Assassin 4. It has eight superconductive composite heat pipes. Apparently this is a new design by Cooler Master. The internal texture of the heat pipe differs between the bottom and top section of the heat pipe. It's a fine texture on the bottom evaporator side of the heat pipe and then a more coarse texture on the top condenser side of the heat pipe and this is all to improve the thermal performance. Like the Assassin 4 it uses two fans as 120 millimeter and 135 millimeter Cooler Master Mobius fans. The 120 millimeter front fan allows for maximum 42 millimeters of RAM clearance. It comes with pre-applied high performance thermal paste and it's compatible with all current desktop platforms including LG 1700, 1200, 11.5x and AMD AM4, AM5. The Cooler Master comes with five years warranty and you get six years warranty with the Deep Cool Assassin 4. With the Assassin 4 there's an accessories box containing a user guide. There's a weird angled screwdriver with a Phillips on one side and then an Allen key head on the other. A tube of thermal compound so that'll be useful if you ever have to remount the cooler or if you upgrade to a different platform and reinstall it. There's a uh, bag with some grease cleaner, guessing that's some kind of alcohol wipe to clean the CPU and the cooler before installation. A bag containing some Intel standoffs and upper mounting brackets. Intel backplate, mounting brackets and standoffs for AMD platforms, some additional fan screws, thumb screws for the upper mounting brackets and a third fan bracket in case you want to install another fan. Cooler Master MA824 Stealth comes with a similar accessories pack. You've got an Intel backplate, additional spring clips for the second fan, a two-way PWM fan splitter, another angled screwdriver with a Phillips head on one side and then an Allen head on the other, four thumb screws, AMD standoffs and upper mounting bracket, Intel standoffs and upper mounting brackets, and then a user manual and warranty information. There's no additional thermal compound that comes with the MA824 Stealth because thermal compound is pre-applied to the base of the cooler and there's no third fan mounts or any third fan brackets included either. So if you want to install a third fan with the MA824 Stealth, you're gonna to have to get creative. So let's take a closer look at the Deep Cool Assassin 4 first. As I say, this comes with a solid copper base and seven six millimeter diameter heat pipes, dual aluminium heat sink, fin stacks. You can't really see them on the Assassin 4 because they're covered by these plastic trim pieces. One of the differences between the two coolers is the fan orientation. So with the Assassin 4, you might think that's the front of the cooler, but it's not. This is actually the back that would face or 
would be overhanging the rear IO of the motherboard. And this is a reverse flow fan, so the uh, blades are in the opposite orientation to a regular fan. This can also be adjusted if you need more clearance for your rear IO. It just simply clips off there and there's a couple of different locations you can put it in to improve the clearance. It's quite a neat and tidy looking thing with this plastic bracket that houses the fan. Potentially you could swap this out for a different fan if you needed to, but you'll see in a minute the central fan might be a bit difficult to replace. The central fan is kind of hidden away behind this magnetic panel and then there's just a couple of clips that you press in and then a bit of a wiggle and a pull that comes out you can see it's quite an odd shape so it might be difficult to replace this with a different fan if you wanted to maybe if you run into some problem with it and it fails in the future it might be a difficult one to replace because it's not a regular shape or it doesn't have a regular mounting system it's got this metal bracket on here which houses the clips that holds it in position. So it's quite easy to remove and install from the cooler. It just simply just slides in. You just push it in like that and it clips into place. So looking at the cooler, it is a really neat, tidy design. It's only 164 millimeters tall, so it should be good for compatibility with most cases. The fans, they are deep cool FDB fans. So there's a 120 millimeter fan in the front and a 140 millimeter fan in the center. And you can see there's a switch on the top of the cooler here. So you can switch between performance and quiet modes. In performance mode, the fans have a speed range of 500 to 1700 RPM. And in quiet mode, it's 500 to 1350 RPM. Maximum airflow in performance mode is 79 10.1 and 58.06 cubic feet per minute. Maximum air pressure is 2.44 and 2.1 millimeters H2O in performance mode. And maximum noise output is 29.3 decibels in performance mode. And the fans use a four pin PWM connection and they're both connected to each other via a splitter and linked to the switch up here that can reduce or increase speed. The only thing other to mention about this on the top here, it's got the Deep Cool logo and that does light up in quite a dim green colour when the cooler is installed and powered on. The Cooler Master MA824 Stealth is a bit bigger than the Assassin 4. In fact, I put them side by side and you can see the difference between the two. There's not a lot in it actually, five millimetres taller without the fan on, but with the orientation of the fans and having this one at the back and no fan required at the front, the RAM clearance on the Assassin is completely unobstructed. With the 120 mil fan on the front of this, I think you've got a maximum of 42 millimeters of clearance, but you can move the fan up as well. So that will obviously increase the height of the cooler, but it also increases RAM clearance. So in terms of the specification of the Cooler Master MA824, very similar to the Deep Cool Assassin with a solid copper base. It is a larger copper base compared to the Assassin, and this is for improved compatibility with Intel processors with the bigger IHS. So that is going to cover any hotspots on the IHS. You'll notice the Cooler Master MA824 Stealth has eight heat pipes in total, dual aluminium heat sink, fin stacks. Getting to the central fan is a lot more difficult on the MA824 Stealth compared to the Assassin 4. You have to remove this top panel, which is kind of clipped in place. That comes off pretty easily. There's some screws to undo there, and this plastic part is also clipped to the heatsink. When you try and pull that off, it sometimes bends the fins, and you also will have to remove these two screws, which means removing some tiny circlips from the bottom of the cooler there. So it's a lot more of a faff around getting the central fan out of here and pretty much like the deep cool one as well. It is quite a strange shape. It is a very similar shape, in fact, to the deep cool fan. These are the Cooler Master Mobius fans. 
They are good quality fans. There's a 120 millimeter for the outside, 135 millimeter for the central fan. 135 millimeter fan has a speed range of zero to 1550 RPM. 120 is zero to 1950 RPM. Maximum airflow is 63.6 and 63.1 cubic feet per minute. Maximum noise output is 24.6 and 22.6 decibels. Max air pressure is 1.92 and 2.69 millimeters h2o and both fans use a standard four pin pwm header to connect to the motherboard we've tested the installation process on our amd test bench both coolers are very simple to install and the process with both coolers is very similar. To install the Assassin 4 first, you need to remove the stock AMD upper mounting brackets, screw in the AMD AM4, AM5 standoffs, fit the deep cool AMD upper mounting brackets, apply some thermal paste to the CPU, the Assassin 4 comes with a tube of thermal paste, so there's enough there for a few installations if you need to remount the cooler. You must remove the central fan from the Assassin 4 to install the cooler, and then you just need to lower it in position over the CPU and tighten the two mounting screws evenly and progressively. Next, slide the central fan back in position, connect up the splitter cable and connect the 4-pin PWM cable to the CPU fan header on the motherboard. Installation of the Cooler Master MA824 Stealth is very similar. Again, you need to remove the stock AMD upper mounting brackets from the motherboard, put the standoffs in place, attach the Cooler Master upper mounting brackets. The cooler comes with some pre-applied thermal paste, so you don't need to add any extra. Position the cooler over the CPU and tighten the two mounting screws evenly and progressively. Connect the two fans to the fan splitter and then connect the four pin PW cable to the motherboard CPU fan header. Installing both coolers is very quick and very simple even with everything inside the case I reckon you would get these installed probably in about 10 minutes. The deep cool one maybe is slightly easier to install than the Cooler Master because of these fan brackets and the fans clip on easier. This front fan is a bit fiddly with those metal brackets but either one is really easy really simple and really quick to install so we tested the thermal performance of both of these coolers on our amd 7950x platform we've also thrown in some comparison coolers as well a few similar dual tower air coolers and a couple of the top performing aios to give you a good idea of the relative performance of these coolers. If you want to check out the full testing methodology, make sure you head over to kitguru.net where there will be a review page for these coolers. Full testing methodology, full specifications, and a bit more info on the coolers is over there to check out. So first let's look at noise output as this will give us a better understanding of thermal performance relative to the noise. With the fans set to their maximum RPM, the Cooler Master MA824 Stealth is the quieter of the two coolers by a significant margin. 43 decibels from the MA824 Stealth compared with 48 decibels noise output from the Assassin 4 is a considerable difference and one that will be noticed when working on a system with these coolers installed. With fans at maximum RPM, the thermal performance of the MA824 Stealth and Assassin 4 in performance fan mode are identical, with both coolers producing an average delta temperature of 78 degrees C. The Noctua NHD15 is is also tired at maximum fan speed. The cheaper Thermal Right Peerless Assassin isn't far behind at just a couple of degrees higher average delta, but the aging Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4 is easily outperformed by both coolers. Tuning the fans down to 40 decibels noise output means the Assassin 4 and MA824 Stealth fan speed is reduced to around 1300 RPM. At this lower noise output, the Cooler Master MA824 Stealth does a better job of holding on to the thermal performance compared with the Assassin 4. It outperforms both the Noctua NHD15 by 2 degrees C and the Deepcool Assassin 4 by even more. So the additional heat pipe and better fans seem to work well for the MA824 Stealth. So running both of these coolers at maximum RPM produces very similar thermal performance, but the Cooler Master MA824 Stealth is emitting significantly less noise. It might not sound like a lot, 43 decibels versus 48 decibels, but in the real world, it is a significant 
difference in noise so that is a big plus point for me for the ma824 stealth and then when you tune the fans down to 40 decibels which is an acceptable noise level the ma824 stealth has better performance than the deep cool assassin 4 so for me all round the cooler master ma824 stealth seems like the better option in terms of performance than the deep cool assassin 4 but there are pros and cons to both of these coolers. This has a slightly more compact design, better RAM clearance with two fans installed. You get that third fan bracket with the Deepcool Assassin 4, so you can potentially add another fan to it, which could improve the thermal performance. The installation is slightly easier on the Assassin 4, but you can't argue with the performance of the Cooler Master MA824 Stealth. This now has to be regarded as probably the best CPU air cooler on the market in terms of thermal performance and noise levels. We know that Noctua is working on a new version of the NHD15, but as it stands now with the NHD15 as old as it is, the technology maybe has moved on since then and that's been implemented by Cooler Master into this MA824 Stealth and it is currently the best performing dual tower CPU cooler. The only problem with it is the price. MSRP is $89.99, so that alone is slightly more expensive than the Deep Cool Assassin 4, but you can't even seem to get it in the UK for its MSRP of $89.99. The best I could find it was, I think, at scan.co.uk, and it was almost £100, so it is very expensive for a CPU air cooler. There are some 360 millimeter AIOs on the market you can buy for a similar price, which will give you better performance. But if you need a air cooler, you don't want to use water cooling, you don't want to use an AIO, this right now is probably the best one to go for. I hope you've enjoyed watching this review of the Cooler Master MA824 Stealth and the Deep Cool Assassin 4. If you have, don't forget to give us a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so if you enjoy what we do here at kit guru and you want to help support us you could always head over to the store pick up some merch or you could even subscribe to our patreon and as always for all the in-depth technical reviews head over to the website